Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to help you get your ingredient list right. Now there's some general rules that apply in most countries around the world. This presentation today is specifically going to be following the EU guidelines, but I will be letting you know where there's some slight differences for other countries. You will find that there's a lot of information that applies to ingredient lists around the world in general. The first thing is you must make sure your ingredients are available to the consumer before they actually purchase and open the product. This means the ingredient list must be on the outer packaging or on display at the point of purchase. Now, if you're selling products online, this means you must have a full and correct ingredient list on your website so that people can access this information before they make a purchase. Now for EU in particular, you must also have the ingredients list on the packaging inside the container. Where you don't have room for this or choose not to do this, you must have a leaflet inserted inside the outer packaging which contains the full and correct ingredient list. The next thing you must make sure, and I do see companies get this wrong, is that ingredients must be listed in descending order down to and including the 1% point. I do want to emphasize this because I do see companies get confused and think that at 1% or less ingredients can be listed in any order. That's not correct. Your ingredient list must be in descending order down to and including the 1% point. Below 1% ingredients can be listed in any order, but please note it's below 1% where they can be listed in any order, not at 1%. At 1% or above, all of your ingredients must be listed in correct descending order. Color additives may be listed in any order. Flavors must be shown using the word flavor, flavors, aroma, aromas, or the ingredients in the flavors. Fragrances must be shown using the words fragrance, fragrances, parfum, parfums, or the ingredients in the fragrances. And remember, for all EU countries and countries following EU labeling requirements, you must also list the allergens present in any flavors, fragrances, or essential oils. These allergens must be listed where they are present at or above 0.001% for leave-on products, or where they are present at or above 0.01% for wash-off products. I often get asked questions about incidental ingredients, so let's talk about this one because it's another confusing point for companies. Incidental ingredients are those ingredients where they might be present as preservatives in the raw material, and then when the raw material gets added to a finished product, those incidental ingredients really aren't performing a function in the finished product. For example, cocomata propyl betaine comes usually with some preservatives present, a low input, but enough to protect the raw material while the raw material is being shipped for manufacture or stored in a manufacturer's warehouse. Now, when the cocomata propyl betaine is added to a formula or to a product, the preservatives that are present in the cocomata propyl betaine aren't enough to preserve the finished product. So they're not really performing a preservative function in the finished product because they're not in there at a concentration sufficient to preserve that finished product, but they're still in there. Now in the EU, South Africa, ASEAN countries, Japan, China, South Korea, there is no concept of incidental ingredients, which means every single component of every single ingredient must be listed on your ingredient list, even if they might otherwise be considered incidental. You don't need to list these incidental ingredients for America or Australia, but everywhere else, every component of every ingredient, including those incidental ingredients, must be listed in your finished product ingredient list because they are present in the product, even in tiny amounts, even if they are performing a functional or technical function in that product. Size matters. Regulations around the world state that the ingredient list must be legible. 
What is legible? Well, the US does give us some guidance on this and requires that ingredient lists are provided in text size 1 16th of an inch for the lowercase o. You could use that as good guidance for other labels around the world. Now let's talk about the names of the ingredients themselves and I often see companies get this wrong. Often they're not meaning to but it's still wrong even if you didn't mean for it to be wrong. You can find inky listings on the COSING website. You must make sure you get the name right on the ingredient list. Now for EU, South Africa, ASEAN countries, the inky list from COSING is where you need to go for the information. For the US, you would use the CTFA ingredient names. For China, they will often use inky names, but you should seek individual assistance from a regulatory consultant from China because there are a few differences. And for Japan, some of their sunscreens may need to be named differently. So refer to the Japanese cosmetic regulations for the correct naming of sunscreen ingredients. Where you are preparing a label for a country other than English, the information you provide must be in the local translation, but must not contradict the English translation of the ingredient list. So the information you provide must be the same, whether it's in English or the local country translation. Be careful with plant names, plant extracts, and even your plant oils. It's not sufficient to just write the plant name, common name, and plant part, it may not be the correct inky name. There are multiple botanical names and plant parts on COSING, so you will need to get supplier documentation and make sure you cross-check this with COSING to provide the correct inky name on your product for the material that you are specifically using. I often get asked about saponified products, so if you're making soaps, you either need to provide the inky name of the plant oil that you are using as the plant oil with sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide if you're making Castile soaps, or you can write the esterified version of the plant oil that you've used. For example, sodium macadamiate. You must use the correct inky name where it exists so again, check COSING. And if you're unsure on this, you should seek proper regulatory assistance to make sure you're naming your saponified products correctly. A couple of final tips to help make sure you get your ingredient list right, and these are some of the common errors I see people make. Where you're using blended ingredients, you actually need to calculate out the individual composition of each material to determine exactly how much of each material is present. For example, let's say you're using a satyryl alcohol, satyryl 20 emulsifier blend. And let's say you're putting this blend in your formula at 5%. It is not correct to list satyryl alcohol and satyryl 20 at the 5% point because that's how much of the blended material you're using. You instead need to calculate the individual portions of satyryl alcohol and satyryl 20 and list them separately depending on the exact amount that each material is actually present. This also applies for any extracts, actives or other blended materials you may be using in your formulas. I also see brands get surfactants wrong. Remember a lot of your surfactants come as dilutions. For example, cocomidopropyl betaine usually comes as a 30% dilution. If you had 10% of a cocomidopropyl betaine raw material, it really only contains 3% cocomidopropyl betaine. So you would list water to cover the 7% portion, you would list cocomidopropyl betaine at the 3% point of the ingredient list. And of course, there's probably a very small input of some preservatives. They need to be listed too, below the 1% point. And they can, of course, then be in any order. So there is how to get your ingredient list right in a nutshell. 
Please remember this advice is of a general nature and individual circumstances could be different. If you're not sure, learn how to get it right. There's also a lot of cases where I see companies get their claims or other label information incorrect and we do have a training workshop on this to help you get it right. Ultimately, it's the brand putting the product onto the market that must make sure they're providing the correct information to consumers. And if a regulatory authority does detect that you're not providing the right information, they'll hold you accountable for providing incorrect information, regardless of who else might also get it wrong. So make sure you get your ingredient list right. I hope this information has helped. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.